people, what's going on? Dusty D here, welcome back to our home studio. We're gonna be shooting some shoe videography today using an entry level camera, the D5100, and we're going for a 360 crisp shot on a black background, something kind of advertising-y and bold. And it's really about the motion. You could technically shoot this on a smartphone or anything here today, but we're gonna use the Product Photography Spinner 360 by Raube to achieve this motion. This spins the camera around the surface as opposed to spinning the surface. When I first saw this, I was surprised. This unlocks a ton of creative possibilities we'll touch on. So make sure to thumb up the video if you enjoy this kind of stuff. And huge shout out to Rabe for sponsoring today's video and hooking us up here. So without further ado, let's dive into this. So basically what we're dealing with here is a really smooth bearing system and rotation. And then our static shoe is just mounted up here on a broomstick, which is a great way to mount things for product photographers. Doesn't have to be the Nimbus 2000, but I recommend everyone get a broomstick from the dollar store because it makes it very rigid. We used an acrylic support plate inside of this just to mount it statically. And I'm really happy with that decision because it's very still as the camera parallaxes back and forth here. Now, as the camera moves, it's super important that this is centered, the shoe is centered to avoid wobble, you see, from a 360 motion if it's not centered. So hopefully we got that lined up good. We'll find out in a minute. So this is my first time mounting something like this. And this will just be the raw light in the room, completely unmodified. And I'm at F8. ISO 100, 1 30th of a second. We should be fairly sharp front to back, I hope. I could drop us to F13 and we could have a little bit more of a depth of field. It will be a little bit darker, but that actually might serve better as a canvas for the LEDs that we're gonna introduce in a moment. So the next light we're gonna be bringing in is the Westcott LED. This is called the ice light. It's pretty soft for an LED light. I'm gonna place it directly from above just to give a uniform lighting to the shoe. So now if you compare this frame to our more ambient exposure we took a moment ago, you can see we're starting to build out, carve out a little bit more of a stylized look using those LEDs and the darker settings on our camera. If you're like me, you might be wondering what's the benefit of having the motion go around the table? I was curious about this too, and basically it lets creative possibilities happen like mounting from above, which we did here. Scenes that can't have motion in them, like a beverage scene, for example, and also video production work. This is completely silent thanks to the bearing system, so that's really good for video work. Okay, so I'm gonna use a piece of black foam core just to knock the background into pure black. We can parallax it on the other side of the camera here on this corresponding beam. And I have a few lamps and things around the room. This will help just knock those into a pure dark value and have them not affect our scene at all. So now that we have our composition, our base composition down pat, I'm gonna turn down our two supporting LEDs here, which are just weaker LEDs. And I have them fixed to the rotating platform and kind of angled up at the heel to try to carve it off a bit, which is our most problematic area. Now, ultimately, the big difference is obviously that these two lights will be fixed to the rotating mechanism, which creates movement in the lighting itself, adding another element of interest versus the static overhead light but it also helps to knock it off the black background, which is our biggest challenge to knock that off in a crisp way. So with these ratios loosely figured out, I'll probably come back at night with the same settings and no ambient light to get the cleanest possible exposure. One thing I might tweak with the lens is a paper tube around the lens. I'll cut this out just to reduce any flare and improve our contrast, which is so crucial on a stark black background. Another thing I might consider doing is raising up the surface a little bit maybe using shoe boxes or something to get that balance as strong as possible. As long as we can zoom in and salvage a black perimeter on the shoe, that's okay. And we'll touch on that in post-production in After Effects. All right, guys, here we are inside of After Effects and we've dragged our clip in. And After Effects is a little bit like Photoshop for video. If you're not familiar with it, it's gonna help us get our clip on a pure black background, which is already pretty much done in camera. We just need to crop it out, which will just take a second. So we crop this to one infinitely loopable 360 which is kind of useful kind of like a gif and let's just bring in a black layer behind all of this and then we'll crop it crudely so control y is the shortcut to make a new layer and i'm going for black and just like photoshop we have to stack these so i'll put the black on the bottom and then for my clip here i need to make a crude mask let's use this rectangular mask up here so a mask just controls what is visible and i'm making a full size mask so i'm grabbing everything and then I'm gonna tweak it a bit. So I need to find the frame where the shoe goes to the left the most, like that. And then I wanna grab these nodes, these adjustment nodes, and I just wanna choke off the mask so we're just showing a little buffer around the shoe. So I'm gonna to go to each frame where it's kind of at the extreme here at the right, 
and I'll grab these and holding shift, I'll just drag them over for a straight line. So let's bring out a curves effect. I'll drag that right on our layer. And we just want to get this off of gray onto black. So I'll do the most minimal adjustment I have to here, which should just be a little breath of a tweak. And that's great. So now we're on a black seamless and it's a lot stronger and we can start brightening up small parts of the image. For example, now that we're on a black background, we can use an upward curve, which is really useful because it won't affect anything that's pure black, but it'll brighten the data on the shoe. So if it's kind of underwhelming, we can tweak it a little bit. Like for example, this side over here has a bit of a brighter fill than the left side when it came around here. So let me apply a small brightening effect here. So let's make a new layer layer new adjustment layer. So that just makes an invisible layer that I can apply adjustments to as it's named. So let's drop curves onto that and I'll put a brightening effect on this curves layer. Now I don't want this to apply everywhere all the time because the front of the shoe is already a little hot. So I want to make this effect only apply to the body of the shoe and not the tongue of the shoe. So a way I could do something like that is get on my pen tool and just like we masked the layer before, I'm going to mask this layer quite crudely just around the bottom of the shoe and I'm going to exclude the tongue. Now that creates a really hard line that I don't want. I want to feather that effect a little bit. So I'm going to go to my adjustment layer, hit M which shows you the mask properties. And in this drop down, there's one of them called feather. I'll increase that feather to maybe 20 pixels, which is going to blur the effect a tiny bit. Now since we'd like this effect to only align at this part of the image when it rotates around this certain area, I'm going to achieve that with opacity. You can hit T to bring up opacity of an effect. So if I bring this to 0%, obviously it's going to disappear. So I'm going to save that keyframe 0%. And then only as the shoe goes fully sideways, am I going to crank that baby up to 100? And then again, as it rotates away, I'll go back down to 0. So basically that effect just shows up strongly as it goes in the middle and it's real subtle. I'll make it even more intense so you can see what's happening. But as we rotate here, it brightens up on the side and then it goes away. That's extremely subtle, but you can notice it on and off. It does make a discernible difference. And because we're on a black background, it does so seamlessly and it can just help lift up an area that kind of was underwhelming in camera and just make it a little more even with its counterpart. I think the last quick tweak I'll make is on this mask here, just like we applied feather to that effect. I want to apply a feather to this mask just in case it crossed with any grain or anything else, just to make sure we get the cleanest result possible. So we came a long way from the original result. We built that up and inside of After Effects, you could tweak with more curved layers to get it even cooler looking. So thumb up the video if you like the result. And if you want to learn more about the 360 spinner, I'll link that below. So thanks again for watching guys. My name is Dustin Dolby and I'll catch you next time here on Workflow. Take care, everybody.